Hey there folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've been making windows again. I had to make enough to uh, finish this box so we can get them all fitted. Uh, felt like I was in a, a window prison. Anyway, that's not why you why you're here. Um, during this week, I've I've not really filmed developments with the uh, Bristol Hercules reduction gear. However, we have had some developments, and I did uh, use the phone to film a few clips during the week. So let's uh, let's take a look at those now. So after extracting the reduction gear from the Bristol Hercules engine. Uh, from a Halifax bomber which was shot down in 1944 I noticed this bearing wasn't sat straight so I've just uh, addressed that problem it's now sat in its hole and I noticed it has a bit of movement as you can see this is the first time this has rotated since being shot down in 1944 so let's just give it a bit more lube and a clean so you can get it to rotate fully so with the, uh, how should we say, the movement in the bearing, it didn't take much, um, how should we say, persuasion to make it rotate. And rotate it this folks. Hard to believe that uh, the last time this bearing rotated was um, September 1944, and it was driven by a Bristol Hercules engine of Halifax MZ763 and unfortunately it was shot down by a night fighter four of the crew didn't survive and while you're watching this rotate this is the longest it's rotated since 1944 just after being shot down folks which is uh, quite a thought really you're only a young man so, with the, the amazement of this piece of engineering, my, uh, my attention focused to the reduction gear and all the bearing, just like this. You think, hmm, not much chance of those cleaning up. However, I did give it some uh, lubrication, some uh, penetrating oil and let it soak, give it a, a bit of a blowout with the airline and then give it another soak and another soak and it's now letting the, uh, the fluid run out of the bottom, there's a sleeve inside there um, I'll put a diagram up now so you can take a look and as you can see the, the three gears have a bearing and a sleeve and the sludge trap um, as you can see the penetrating oil is coming out and where this stuff is which is now coming off let's just wipe that folks hang on let me get a piece of that look how nice that cleans up Pretty much as clean as the day it was in use, folks. That's quite amazing. So, what do I do next? I wasn't going to free this off, I had no intentions of. However, is it possible? We've got these bearings to free off the sleeve. We have a bush inside here, which is actually fed, oh look, that's coming out. There's two little link sausages, I'll call them, uh, which feed a bush inside here. If that frees off, and they free off, and that just leaves the very poorly looking bearing at the back. As you can see, it's broken up. Obviously, yeah, part of it that looks like aluminium. Well, I think that's due to this actually being bent. That could be the problem because this needs to rotate separately to this part. The bearing obviously 
makes that happen. So, what do you think, folks? Do you think we should attempt it? I'll well, remove this out of the way, the fixed gear, and then we can see a little bit more. So, as you can see, I've slid this just back out of the way so we can get a, a view of what's, what's occurring. As you can see, it's definitely uh, allowed the fluid to pass through pretty much all the way around, which is a good sign. We had a casualty when taking this apart. Sadly, there was a little lug just there. Um, when I extracted the gears itself, if this had come with the whole assembly, um, that would have survived. However, we're not going flying with this, so I'm not too concerned. So, these two actually feed oil to this bush this this part should rotate obviously it doesn't at the moment so that would be one of the um one of the issues to overcome that bush would need to rotate obviously we'd need these three to rotate it's just this end that's the problem i've also noticed there's a number one there and there's a number three there which means there must be a number two on that one just little details so I think uh, what we need to do next is maybe either do another one of these and see if we can get some fluid through it and get some of this rust out and maybe see if we can get some fluid to go down these um, oiling holes which might just let some fluid into that that bush there yeah I think that sounds like a plan I'm still quite blown away folks that that bearing just alright it's a little bit noisy but wouldn't you be after what 79 years So far, uh, most of this, how should I say, unseizing has been done using this. Uh, I'm not sponsored by GT85, however, if you work for them and you want to sponsor me, please comment below. Right, what I've, I've done on, on here was basically it just got covered in this and the muck came off. So I'm just going to give it all a soak. Can't have too much lubrication. And just pop it into the bush through this oiling hole. And if you can quite see that, another one there. Hmm. Yes, yeah, this claggy mud, or whatever it is. It's made a very good protection system. Because underneath it, as you can see folks in there, things are like new. So, I'm going to take a bit of soaking into it. Alright, right, so we can't have too much of this stuff. And so we'll give it a dousing. I don't know if that's dripping out of... off the bottom of the bush or out of the bottom of the bush. Could be a bit of both, but so we'll uh, we shall leave that to uh, soak in a little bit, and then we'll come back and see if we can scrape it all off. I still can't get over that. So we had a bit of a a bit of a clean. 
A lot of the gunge and mud and oily substances have come off. I'm hoping by getting some penetrating oil down the oiling holes, we can free off this bush. I'm going to rotate it round so another one of these is at the top. And we can give that a, a clean out and we'll try some lubrication down it. And the same for that one there. So, I would say things are looking quite good that 90% of this will work. Just that rear bearing, folks. I don't think that one's going to work. Which is a shame because it'd be nice to. Uh, Let's have this on display and demonstrate how it actually works. Anyway, that's it for this one. Um, should I go full on and try and restore this to uh, rotating condition? Or should I just clean it up and let it be uh, observed as a static display? Let me know in the comments, folks. Yeah. 1944 that was last spun by an engine. Remarkable. So I've just uh, levelled it up with a, another pinion gear at the top. And now I'm going to fill the bearing. Which should Soak down and come out of there. Also, I've just uncovered the uh, the part number there. If you can see that, folks. You wouldn't think that was 79 years old. And just there, I can see the number two. So we've got number one, number two, and number three. And I think this is going to clean up really well, folks. What an amazing piece of engineering. So I shall get this filled up. It's obviously soaking somewhere. Hopefully it's going down the sleeve inside. And it'll uh, be pouring out the bottom by morning. That's the hopes, anyway. See, keep going down there. It's quite quick, actually. Hopefully by morning it's coming out of there. Can't believe how clean it is. There's also a number on, I think it's that gear there. I'll put a picture in. Not sure what it means. If anybody does, please comment below. Just wow. Bringing history back to life, folks. That still blows me away. As you can see, I've been uh, lubricating the pinion bearings and I'm just in the process of getting this uh, bush off. Again, this hasn't moved since 1944. And I'll be honest, it's putting up a bit of a fight. But at least we know it will also rotate. Yeah. Right now tap off. Hmm. 
There's old book there. Hmm, let me just uh, spin it to the other side. Need a tap on that side. She flies. Right. So we can now uh, take that off and that can be cleaned separately. I'm just blown away by how this is actually coming apart. So folks, that's the uh, that's the bush. See all the oiling holes inside. That should clean up nicely now. Let's take a quick uh, look at the shaft itself. I'm getting a bit messy. So let's take a closer look. A little bit of corrosion uh, from between where they basically where the oiling holes sit. Uh, that should clean up quite well. In fact, all of that can be cleaned up quite well now. So, they look like they will free off. But I can't rotate them because I can't rotate this bearing in here, which, yeah, that one doesn't look too good. Doesn't look happy. Well, the alternative would be to try and find another one. Anybody got one kicking about? I'm sure I'll be able to get a part number off it at some point. So yeah, it's almost a part and it's looking that we could put it back together in a rotating condition. That's quite amazing folks. No filming equipment today folks. And what I've been doing is just lubricating these pinion bearings, the thrust bearings. As you can see, there's a bit of movement there. So what I've been doing. Gently, gently. This is the second one because that one rotates. Seems we get a bit more movement.
slowly freeing off, folks. I'm not sponsored by GT85, uh, but it seems to work, and if you do work for GT85, uh, and you'd like to sponsor me, please get in touch. Obviously a bit of muck in the bearing somewhere. Down. Yeah, that's definitely uh, going to rotate fully. Says. <coughs> Maybe give it a blowout with the airline, get some of the debris out of it. Well folks, a bit more tapping and that freed off and as you can see that rotates quite well again first time since 1944 Not in uh, too bad a condition for its age I think most of the balls have started to move now but that will be cleaned up further. I love working with this uh, this kind of history, folks. Well, so far we've uh, obviously we've managed to remove the reduction gear and the fixed gear. The housing bear in there, which once had over sixteen hundred horsepower going through there in a shaft, uh, rotates again. We've managed to remove the um, the bush and the oiling sleeve, which obviously will cleaned up and uh, rotate, as will the bearing. And then we've got the pinion uh, bevel gears. This is the last one to free off, so that one's nice and free. And that one's free, a little bit notchy, and. That one's free. So that only leaves one bearing. That one in there. And that one doesn't look very happy, as you can see. Now, if I replace that bearing with, uh, with another one, this whole assembly, theoretically, providing these are free on the, uh, on the shafts, could all rotate. So now I've finished twatting about with windows. Uh, come back to this. So, with the bearing in there freed off, the um, oiling sleeve stroke bush removed, fixed gear removed, and now that all these rotate. It leaves one bearing, this one, which, as you can see, doesn't look happy. The, uh, the aluminium ring that holds the ball bearing seems uh, to be in a bit of pain there. So I think what I'll do first, I'll have to excuse the noise folks, it's raining. Uh, is give it some lubrication. So, old trusty, now if you do work for GT85 and you want me uh, to advertise your product, get in touch, it works. Mmm.
Is it going to pour straight through or is it just going to sit in there and hopefully uh, do its magic folks? As you can see that looks like some kind of lock ring. It's got like little tabs that one of them will be knocked up somewhere. Can't see it. Anyway. I'll fill this up, leave it overnight. See what, uh, what it's like in the morning. Well, during the day, I've um, kept giving it a lube up with the uh, good old GT85. Uh, I've knocked out some of the corrosion that was between all the, uh, the little balls there. They're all looking a bit happier, as you can see. Bit of a shine to them in places, that's promising. But will it free off? That's still, uh, still to be answered. Probably to rotate that bearing means rotating this. And okay, those bearings are free, but are the actual uh, pinion gears free on their bush? Probably not. So I could actually be working against four different uh, four different things here if they don't move. That's three resistance, uh, and obviously the bearing itself. Hmm. Oh well, we shall uh, we shall find out tomorrow if it looks better. Because I'm going to leave it again and soak overnight and uh, see if things want to uh, want to move, want to uh, how should we say play ball. Well, I've had another clean out and a another lubrication. Now those balls don't look too bad. They don't look much different to what they did as the, uh, as the freeing off procedure went. Well, funnily enough, that one's gone tight now. Odd. It may be because uh, it'll show up on camera. You can see that moving, folks. Well, I suggest that's free, and I've had movement in that one and a little bit in that one. Well, that bearing's gone tight now, so let's just... Yeah, that's definitely gone tight. Hmm, interesting. The gear's freed off, but the bearing's gone tight. Well... At least we know things are moving. So if these are all free, it means we're only fighting against the bearing itself. Well, that's a bonus. That's cheered me up. Well, that's a good little update. The pinion gears are free. Right, fiddled about a bit more, and mm. I didn't say that, but that is starting to rotate. Um, the only problem is, the bearing itself is just kind of slack in its housing. But, 
We have established all three of the uh, pinion gears are free. Yeah. The possibility of uh, getting this thing rotating again goes back to uh, this bearing. When that first rotated, it uh, definitely fired something up inside me to uh, see how much would, how should I say, come back to life. So, after the bearing, there was this oiling sleeve with these two little plungers. And they go either side of them and sit in those and their only function really was to pass oil through a channel into here and then into this uh, into this bush so yep yeah, they'll all need cleaning up I believe they're in two pieces and yes you can just see a spring in there so they should be spring loaded so, moving on from there, we, uh, we managed to free these bearings off. And those are the uh, thrust bearings. They're, they're a little bit stiff in places, but not too bad. Um, the rear bearing was cleaned up quite well, but still doesn't rotate. However, this thing here is some kind of like, uh, best described as a thrust washer between the bearing and the bevel gear. And that has freed off. So, let me demonstrate. So I didn't know if the three pinion gears had actually freed off on their uh, inner bushings. But I did find out. I managed to get some movements suggesting that these were free. And indeed there were, and it wasn't long before it could be rotated fully. And the last time I suppose this would have been turning would have been after being shot down in 1944 and sadly hitting the ground. Sadly, four crew members did die in this incident. What a piece of engineering, folks. And this is the longest it's rotated since 1944, as it happens. So now the big clean-up begins. I need to clean up all the parts. Well folks, that's it for this video. As you can see, we've, we've got things rotating you know, for the first time in 79 years. It has to be said, it's uh, quite an amazing piece of engineering for, you know, what, 1930s? I would have thought this would have been designed, maybe? Maybe before. Let me know in the comments. Um, if you were for GT85, maybe we could do a sponsorship deal. I get through quite a bit, and I have to say, it's done the job. So please check out my other videos for uh, other World War II history. Uh, thanks for uh, watching, liking, subscribing and all that jazz. Catch you on the next one.